Hello, 8th graders. As we continue our study of the 1980s, please make sure you have your Reagan Revolution video quiz in front of you and watch for the clues to answer the questions. You should also have a worksheet entitled Dutch Reagan that accompanied this video. Every four years before a presidential election, each political party holds a national convention in which that party's candidate for president is officially nominated. In 1976, the Democrats nominated Jimmy Carter as their candidate to go against President Gerald Ford, who was the Republican nominee. It had been a long four years for Ford, which started when he was appointed vice president by President Richard Nixon after Nixon's vice president resigned over a scandal. Then, as we have discussed, Nixon resigned due to his involvement with the Watergate scandal, suddenly making Ford president. Since Nixon had just been re-elected, Ford would serve as president for nearly all of what would have been Nixon's second term as president. During his, uh, his time in office, Ford accomplished a few things, but lost the support of voters due to the fact that he had pardoned Nixon, failed to make significant improvements with the economy, and Vietnam was essentially lost under his watch. By 1976, Ford was likely weary, perhaps worn out from four years of efforts to help the country with very little success. To many at the 1976 Republican National Convention, it showed. Ford had secured the nomination of his party, but Republican leaders and voters alike were not hopeful that Gerald Ford could rise above his apparent lack of progress and beat Carter, who was defining himself as an outsider who would f reform Washington after the mess created by Watergate. Possibly the most memorable moment at the 1976 Republican National Convention was a speech by Ronald Reagan, who was at the time the former governor of California. This is our challenge. And this is why here in this hall tonight, better than we've ever done before, we've got to quit talking to each other and about each other and go out and communicate to the world that we may be fewer in numbers than we've ever been, but we carry the message they're waiting for. We must go forth from here united, determined that what a great general said a few years ago is true. There is no substitute for victory. Mr. President. Reagan's speech was so inspiring that many Republicans felt that, uh, or left that convention saying, I think we've nominated the wrong guy. So began what many have remembered as the Reagan Revolution. Republican fears became reality that November as Jimmy Carter won the election and became the 39th president of the United States. Fortunately for the Republicans, Jimmy Carter was not a very popular president. He didn't get along well with the leaders of his own party. The, ec the economy did not improve. And by 1980, Iran was still holding American hostages. Ahead of the 1980 presidential election, Ronald Reagan campaigned for increased defense spending, implementation of a new idea called supply side economics, and a balanced budget. Reagan was so popular that many Democrats even switched sides choosing to vote for him over President Carter. These voters became known as the Reagan Democrats. Reagan won the election by a landslide and many believed that uh, a new era had begun that would mean great things were ahead for America. Reagan didn't waste any time trying to prove that the voters had made the right choice. The day he was inaugurated as president, the Iranians released all of the American hostages, thus kickstarting an era of new approaches to every aspect of American life and government. In our next lesson, we'll talk more about the Reagan era, including his conservative goals and tough approach to communism. For now, please make sure you have completed the video quiz and the worksheet entitled Dutch Reagan.